toes together, knees open, arms forward, forehead down to your mat. Get stretched out in a way that feels just really good in your body, and then start your breathing. Start by taking a deep breath in, and a sigh, exhale. You might need to do that a few times until you get to a place where you at least have some amount of just the initial letting go. Then start shaping your breath. It's not something, I don't know about you, but that I think of all day long. And there's a lot of choice in your breath. Yes, it happens and it's automatic, but all the qualities of it, you have a lot of choice around. Come on in. That's all right. So it's slow, steady, deep, and rhythmic. Your mom's right over there. Let your exhales be just as long as your inhales. And give yourself a little bit of space for the ujjayi breath between the inhale and between the exhale. So a pause in that space and then a pause after the exhale. Then let's start bringing movement on your next inhale. Lift your body up into downward facing dog and start exploring. Bend and straighten your knees. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And then start choosing the pose. That's different from just doing the first thing you fall into. Move around and discover, okay, is there a little more room for length or width? Should I soften my knees so I could drag my hips back? When I do that, does it create enough stretch from my fingertips to my hips? Be asking yourself these kinds of questions with curiosity. Then set your gaze on one point. You're welcome. Don't worry about stepping on that. Just go ahead. And so your drishti is the name of your gaze, and it's a place to just start settling your attention, taking it from all the places it may be and just bringing it to one spot and letting it rest there. And then be purposeful with it. Shift your gaze forward, step up to the front of your mat. When you get to the front, inhale and lift up halfway, and then exhale, hang down. Ragdoll pose. Hold your opposite elbow and sway from side to side. Even shift the weight between one foot and the next foot. And just invite that the whole back side of your body starts to wake up. Take a moment here as you're hanging and allowing your body to wake up to keep your gaze settled and continue cultivating your breathing. Then press your feet down into your mat and come rolling up to standing. Once you're standing tall, sweep your arms overhead. Look up, stretch up, then hands into prayer position at the center of your chest. Settle your gaze on one still point in the room and set your intention for the practice. An intention is usually set up as a declaration. I am something curious, present. And this time today, try it as a question. What if I'm curious the whole way through practice? Three times as a clearing, we'll chant OM together. So take a deep breath in. Oh. Inhale, reach up to the ceiling, stretch. Exhale, fold down to the floor. Inhale, lift up halfway. Then as you exhale, high plank to low plank. Once you're there, inhale, lift your chest, upward facing dog. Exhale, move to downward facing dog. Three breaths together, inhale. A long breath out. Two more, deep breath in. Long breath out. Now on this last one, we'll move, take a breath in. When you exhale, bend your knees and look forward, then move up to your hands by stepping or jumping. Inhale, lift up halfway and fold. Press down, stand up, look up and reach. Fold then to the floor as you exhale. Inhale, lift up halfway, low plank as you exhale. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Three breaths. Fill the room with breath. Invite Leo and Jane into the breathing and share with them. 
One more time, inhale, exhale, bend your knees and jump. Halfway lift, forward fold, rise up, reach up. This is extended mountain pose. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Inhale, lift halfway, step or drop into the low plank. Upward facing dog, open up your chest, downward facing dog. Now start to lengthen the pose a little bit more. Take up a little more space on your mat as you breathe. Two more breaths. Then this is the last one. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees, jump to your hands. Halfway lift, long flat back, fold. One more time, stand up, reach, and then stretch back. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Inhale, lift halfway, drop right down into the low plank. Nice, Grace. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, and breathe here. Now, jumping forward comes a little more easily when your feet are set really wide. Here's the last breath. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees, jump. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose next, sit back. Stretch your arms high. Breathe right here for a few breaths. Work on the difference between reaching and sitting. Try to create that there's a stretching from your fingertips reaching to the ceiling to your hip crease reaching back. So all the way up the side of your body, you feel the stretch. Sit back really deep. Sit deep here. Then inhale, reach, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, drop to the low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward and lunge, back foot flat. Inhale, look up, stretch up, reach. Hands to the floor, chaturanga, steadily empty your breath. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Left side now, step. Deepest lunge you can get into and reach. Hands to the floor, low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. So get a few good breaths in, and we're going to pick up the pace a little bit with the next one. Two more here. Inhale, full exhale. Ready to move. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees, jump. Halfway lift, fold. Chair pose, reach, fold. Halfway lift, drop. Upward dog. Downward dog, right foot forward, lunge, reach, hands down, chaturanga. Upward dog, downward dog, step your left foot. Inhale, reach, hands down, chaturanga. Upward dog, downward facing dog, and breathe. Now, soften the backs of your knees a little bit and drag your hips back out of your hands. Two more breaths. Last breath, inhale, exhale, bend your knees, jump, halfway lift, fold, here we go again, chair pose, reach, fold to the floor, halfway lift, drop into the low plank, right into the bottom of it, inhale, up, exhale, back, right foot forward, lunge, inhale, look up, reach, and then reach back, hands down, chaturanga, upward facing dog, Downward facing dog, left side step, long stride, deep lunge, reach, hands down, chaturanga. Lizzie, even longer next time. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, and breathe. This section of poses is to wake up in so many ways inside of our skin that our breath matches our movements. We're connected to each other through breath. One more inhale, exhale, bend your knees, jump, halfway lift. Fold, chair pose, sit, reach, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, low plank. Upward dog, downward dog. Take a long step, lunge as deep as you can and reach up. Hands down, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Left side step and lunge, back foot flat. Reach up, look up, hands down. Chaturanga. 
Upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Take a breath in, open up your mouth, sigh. Raise your right leg into the air, bend your knee and flip the pose over. Get the stretch down the side of your body, all the way over until two feet are on the floor. While you're reaching and stretching here, imagine from the outside of your right knee up the side of your body all the way to your baby finger. Those two points pulling in opposite directions. Stretch and breathe into them. Then side plank, right hand on your mat. Face the left side of your mat. Stack your body up. A million variations available. Lift your top leg or hug your bottom knee into your chest. Keep your two feet on the floor. You can always look around the room to see a few ideas. Now look up to the ceiling, reach for the ceiling, then float high plank to low. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take another breath with a sigh and just clear it out. Left leg in the air, bend your knee and flip the pose over. I always love this pose, this first early pose, because all the space between my ribs starts to stretch open. And I didn't really realize how tight that was and how much impact that was having on my ability to breathe, be comfortable in my own body. So you now stretch the whole side of your body from the side of your knee out to your fingertips. Those two points, pull them apart. Side plank, left hand to the mat, face the long right side of your mat. And keep your breath flowing as you move. Activate your feet, your toes awake. Spread them out. It'll make the whole thing balance easier. You got to reach up, Lindsay. Look up, high plank to low. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Now step your right foot forward for crescent lunge. This pose, you stand on the ball of your back foot and square your hips to the front of your mat. Keep your breath flowing. Once you get down low in the pose, lift your belly up to your fingertips. Get the lift and the stretch. Then go a little lower and lift and stretch. Reach up and then start reaching back. Yeah, like you're gonna sit that ball on a shelf behind you. Keep your belly lifting so the whole thing stays light. One more breath, hands to prayer and twist. Left elbow, right knee. Oh wait, I'm calling Elena, Lizzie. I'm just looking across the room. I'm like, wait, that's not right. Settle your elbow. Get your breath flowing. There's so much to be opened in the rib cage. Now we get the back left ribs. Stretch that open and twist. Two more, stretch it open, back left ribs and twist. Can you feel that? Isn't it the best and worst feeling all at once? Twist on your exhale. Reach up to crescent lunge, open to warrior two. So face the long left side of your mat. Point your front toes toward the front of your mat and point your knee in that same direction. Stretch your arms wide. So there are two Elena's. Elena, watch turning your toes beyond your, yeah, that's it. Steady breathing. Keep wrapping this guy open. Oh, there you go. Tilt for extended side angle. Go a little longer if you can, Ashley. Deep breathing. Good, Charlie, lunge deeper. Your knee, not your torso, that's it if you can. Last breath, high plank to low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Left side crescent lunge, arms overhead. Keep your breath flowing. Start working to build up the pose. A little more even than you're used to, drag your right hip forward. So imagine there's just a little pressure here. Drag this hip forward just a touch. Good. Lift up all the way up through to your fingertips and back. So just look back and see if you can see right back here. Yes, you got it. Lift up and look back. I'll help you study. Look for a new line of words. Yeah, hands to prayer. Twist right elbow to your left knee. Anchor your elbow to your knee and breathe. That's it. Keep your breath flowing. If you're able then, open your arms. If that takes your pose to the next good space for you. 
and then fire up your back leg. See if you can press your heel back miles like it's pressing. Yes, like that. Now keep twisting as you exhale. Two more. Really blow out and turn. Back right ribs open up on this last twist. Then reach up to crescent lunge. Open to warrior two. Work on the space under your pose. Little more length and lunge down. That's it. Good, Grace. Maybe move your back heel back just a little bit. That's perfect, Laura. Stretch and tilt. Extended side angle. Deep, deep lunge. Really reach high to the ceiling. Once you get down into the deepest of the pose for you, just keep on breathing, enjoying the pose. Lindsay, can you lunge a little more? Yeah, lift your chest. Keep on breathing. Two more breaths. Reach, Scarlet. Last breath. Hands to the floor, Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a deep breath. Open up your mouth and sigh. Two more breaths and really just stretch your hips back. Let the whole side of your body get long. On your last breath, inhale. Exhale, bend your knees. Jump to your hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. We'll take chair twist. Sit back in the chair. Hands to prayer. Twist to the right. So bring your left elbow outside of your right knee. Keep your breath flowing. Once you get your elbow settled, start feeling what there is to feel in your legs and the symmetry and balance between the two. You want to create the sense of that your hips are reaching back to sit on a wall behind you. So not tucked under you, but reaching way back. You can open your arms if you'd like. You can bind your arms. You can take any further variation you'd like. Sit deep and open your chest up. Now three breaths. Just expand your chest and upper back. That's it. Just be completely in the sensation of the pose. You still have one more breath. Stay and exhale. Reach up for chair. Forward fold. Feet hip width distance or wider. Hook your big toes. Lift up halfway. So from crown to tail, you're as long as you can go. And then fold and let the back of your pelvis become very broad. The length of your spine, let it grow longer and longer. And then see what shows up. If there's anything to adjust or change or adapt to, you do that. And keep your breath flowing. It's a nice pose to just really get a quality of restoration, being replenished. Chair pose the other way, twist. So sit into the chair, right elbow to your left knee. Sit back. So if your pose gets set up kind of like conservative and you kind of like take a little squat, the whole thing's going to hang heavy in your quad muscles at the front of your legs. Sit back and engage the hamstrings too. Your ability to sustain the pose longer will be much greater. Open the arms if you are. Pull that hip crease back, Ashley. Yes. Sit deep. So pull your right hip back and your left knee forward. This one back, this one forward, and sit. Yes. And it's all here. Feel it? Okay, two more breaths. This is so good for you playing tennis. This twisting part of your back, it needs to be more mobile, so just breathe and let the space get easy. Let's do one more breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale, reach to the ceiling, then reach up to crescent lunge, fold down. Tuck your palms under your feet from the front and stand on your hands. Keep your breath flowing. You can just shake your head out. Check your feet out. If you look down at your feet and your toes are sort of turning out or all the weight is hanging in your baby toe as you breathe, reorganize your feet so that they're like hands on a clock facing 12 o'clock. Press your heels down into the mat so they're anchored there. And then just shift your hips forward to your toes until you feel the back of your thighs engaged in the pose. Then let that work keep happening as you breathe. And you just let your spine drag long toward the floor. Just through the act of breathing, let your back ribs start to soften and open.
Release your hands from beneath your feet. Crow pose. So set your hands wide on the mat. Squeeze the mat with your fingertips. Knees on the outside of your armpits. And then just tilt forward. Once you get forward, pull your ribs in and hollow your body out to hold this pose. If taking the pose hands down, just not the best spot for you today. You could do it seated, your legs in a diamond shape and your arms between your knees, pressing out while your knees press in. You could even let your toes rest on the ground. Just pick the spot where you're working today. If your hands down on your next exhale, pull your ribs up and hollow out your belly. Two more breaths. On the last one, one foot at a time, chaturanga, float, yes. Upward facing dog to downward facing dog. When you get to the downward facing dog, take a breath, have a sigh. One more time, inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, jump to your hands. Half lift, forward fold. Come rolling up to standing, take your time coming up, then arms overhead. Right side eagle pose, wrap your right arm under your left, cross your legs, right leg over the left, and see if your toes will tuck behind your calf muscle. Steady gaze, steady breathing. Bring some breath into the space. Just lift the pit of your belly. Interesting approach there, Leo, I like that. One more breath. Step out, arms overhead. Left arm under, left leg over. Keep your breath flowing. Where's the airplane on this side, Leo? Ah, there you go. <laughs> and step out, arms overhead. I'll give you what Leo was doing at home. So from here, we'll start with airplane pose. So Toes behind you, chest open, hips square, and then just move into your airplane pose, whatever that looks like. It could be all the way up here. You could be really tilted down, but our eyes on one spot. Now, you'll want to really get to acquainted to the mounds, the ball mounds of your big toes in both foot. Really press it down. And then from here, once you have your gaze set and steady, keep it steady. Bring yourself into right side eagle pose. So come on up, right arm under, right leg over, and breathe. A little bit of extra action, a little spice in the pot. Leo decided to add to class today. I thought we should all enjoy it. Keep your airplane pose for one more breath. Then keep your arms bound, unwrap your right leg, and reach it back into airplane legs and just keep your arms bound. Once you get yourself settled, move your bound arms a couple of inches forward. You'll feel your shoulders differently. And then just breathe here. Feet active. One more breath like this. Open up to the airplane pose. Come up and hug your knee into your chest and put your foot on the floor. Then we'll do the other side. Left leg behind you. Open up your arms, ready for the airplane pose, and tilt. All it takes to hold your balance here is to just breathe. Keep your gaze on one point, <clears throat> and then reach out to the periphery. Next breath, come into Eagle Pose. Left arm under, left leg over. Steady breathing right here in your airplane pose. Such a great chance for the backs of your shoulders, going down your arms to open up. Lift the pit of your belly and just let your lower back get long and easy. Keep your arms bound, unwind your left leg, reach your left leg back into airplane legs. Steady the ability to stay focused and balanced as you move. That's the skill you want. Open your arms, reach out to your airplane arms, stretch them out, one more breath, then come up, hug your knee into your chest, and put your foot on the floor. Let's switch sides now. Hug your right knee into your chest and stand up tall. Stay holding your knee or hold your foot and extend your foot forward, your knee forward to the front of the room. Work on your flexibility with that, or leg forward, no holding on, a little more strength work. You pick for you. Holding on, not holding on, and breathe. Not holding on, it's okay if you let that leg soften a little bit so you can stand up a little taller. Stand as tall as you can, Lara. Heel down, head, yes, high, feel the difference. For everyone, open your leg to the right, 
look and reach to the left and breathe. Steady breath. Come to the center, hug your knee into your chest and foot on the floor. Let's hug your left knee into your chest. Stand tall, hold your foot and extend your knee, heel to the front of your space, steady breathing. See if you can stand tall, Lauren, without leaning back. Yes, just like that. Open your leg to the left, look and reach to the right. Steady breathing. <laughs> when one goes, they all go sometimes. Come back to the center, hug your knee into your chest and bring your foot to the floor. We'll take standing bow pose. So arm bone goes straight back. Elbow open, forearm open, hand open. And then find where you easily hold, toe, foot, ankle, and move your hand one hand print lower. Left arm in the air. Now knee down, hand up, stretch. Once you have stretch, stretch it forward and back. Sometimes I like to turn my palm to the side. It helps me just get this sense of forward and back more. Then once that's maxed out, they have to stay equal and opposite, then you can press foot down, foot up. Drive your foot up toward a split as far as it will go. Your hand has to be down your shin, though, to access the split. You might even go lower next time, Grace. Couple more breaths here. That's it, Scarlett. Foot down, foot up. Stay with it. Reach, reach. Don't, don't change your eyes. Don't look at me. Come on up. Step out of the pose. Just pause and take a breath. It's the best on a warm day. This is the best time of day, best pose. Take your arm bone back and open up. Now. Find the easy spot to grab, and then go a little bit deeper. The only way to have the more up and down split is your hand deeper on your shin. And then go. There you go, Lena. Good job. Nice and steady. You have it. Stay steady. That was so good. Keep going. Drive your foot up, Lizzie and Abby. Another breath. And step out. So you got what you got on that first set, and you're all warmed up and ready for something more. This pose can be such a game changer, total opening up to something new. So let's do a second set. Hold down a little deeper if you can. If you got to the point where you sort of got stuck, if you couldn't get further, it was sort of the end of the up and down, your hand has to go lower so you have more access to driving your foot up. So it might feel awkward at first to have your hand low, but try it a little lower than it was last time. Right hand back, grab your right ankle. You pick the other side, don't worry about it. We're going to do both sides. So let the side that's kicking, let those ribs come forward a little bit, that side of your chest forward. You'll have to kick more to get the space for that. Nice, Lauren. That was really nice. Breathe. Okay, come on out of it. Second side, second set. <laughs> That should leave you coming out of the pose with a sense of like, whoa, got to breathe here a little, catch my breath. It gives you compression on one side, a lot of stretch on the other side. If you come out, not your back, but if you come out like, I just have to breathe a second, that's okay. Left side. Hold down low on your shin. Now, as much as you push your shin back, bring that side of your rib cage forward. That's it. But pull your shoulders open by kicking. Keep kicking and kicking back and up. Reach. Good. Just play with the edge of it. Stay with it. If you fall out, come back in. Miles, can you look up a little more and kick up? Okay, good. Stay with it. Two breaths, just two. Step out. The best pose. Come to the front of your mat for tree pose. Sole of your right foot to the left inner thigh. Palms, press them together. You could also reach your arms overhead, but it can be really settling to press your palms together at this stage of your practice. Try to press the knuckle of your big toe down. And then switch sides, right foot down, left foot up. 
Right foot down, left foot up. Take a little peek at your foot. We all have whatever usual spot we put our foot in. Mine definitely lots of toes turning out, but many of us toes turning out. Try to bring it like it's a hand of a clock facing 12 o'clock. Then hands, hands to prayer position. And then if you keep your standing knee just a tiny bit bent, you'll really be able to stand into your big toe. It won't in fact be bent, it'll be straight, but it'll feel bent. One more breath, then step out. Come to the front of your mat. Once you arrive, inhale and sweep your arms overhead. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Inhale, lift up halfway. Low plank on the exhale. See if you can just drop. Inhale, nice mag. Upward dog, downward dog. Step your right foot to the inside of your right hand. Triangle pose. So keep your breath flowing as you build this pose. Two straight legs or straight-ish legs. Right hand on the block or floor behind your right ankle. A long base is a great setup in this particular pose. Go way longer, Lindsay and Lauren. Feet long apart. Yep. Breathe. Now push the knuckle of your front foot's big toe down into the mat. Keep pressing your toe. Your hand can go on the floor behind your ankle. Good. So once your toe is pressing down, and your hip crease drives back, you'll feel your front leg's inner thigh open. Keep letting this right underside of your body stay long. Keep on breathing. Open up the top of your left shoulder, open toward the ceiling. One more breath here. Come on up to standing. Face the long left side of your mat, hands on your hips and lift your chest up high, forward fold. Once you get down there, double check that your feet are parallel to the short sides of your mat rather than turning out. And walk your hands in front of you and put your spider hands on the ground. Once they're kind of a stretch out there, then take a breath and sink and stretch your hips back. So from your fingertips down the side of your body through every rib to your hip crease, they're stretching. And then just breathe into that space. We're looking for the sides of the body to open up. They can become so closed down and collapsed and not in the same way on the two sides and impact your ability to move, to twist, to breathe, to back bend, to forward fold. Take one more breath here and get all the space and length that you can. Then walk your hands back in and come on up to standing and turn to face the front of your mat. Feet with some width and some length. It should not be that they're super short and close together. There should be some effort to work your hips square to the front of your mat. So give yourself some length. Then take your hands around behind your back, lift your chest up high, and hinge. From the ball of your front foot's big toe to your sitting bone of your front leg, stretch those two points apart from each other. Just work yourself toward a fold. Weight even in your two feet. Keep on breathing. Bring your weight to your back foot. Not like that. Your front foot. Go front. There's the middle. You feel your hamstrings? Okay, good. Good. You got that. Scarlett, can you straighten your front leg a little more? Weight in your front foot, though. There. Twisting triangle. Put your left fingertips on the block or floor under your left shoulder. Your right arm can turn and reach open or hand to your hip. Keep That's it, Charlie. You're making good corrections. Keep dragging the hip back. And keep some weight in your back foot, too, if you can. It's two things that are kind of opposing there to do. You got it, though. Take a breath. Exhale and twist. Hands to the floor. Step to downward facing dog and get a stretch. Once you've felt that stretch, step your left foot forward for triangle pose. A huge base, so there's a lot of freedom here in the pose to build the opening. Once the feet are set long and both feet, the big toe is grounded and anchored, then you can drive this sitting bone back. Lots of length under the pose and then start to open. That's it, Grace. Put your hand on the floor and start to look for Laura behind you. Once you get all the opening of the inner thigh and under your rib, then you start to get it in your chest. 
you can take your hand back toward Lauren, Laura, and just look for her hair. Blue ponytail holder. Every time you exhale, strong belly, relax your head back, and relax your head back. One more breath. Come on up to standing. Face the long right side of your mat, feet parallel to the short ends, arms behind, interlace your hands at your low back, or if they feel kind of fixed there at your low back, hold a strap or a hand towel. Then lift your chest up, forward fold, and let your hands spill overhead. You can make a little softness to the backs of your knees. Go a little soft here, yes, because the opportunity for you is this space through here. Yeah, look for the space throughout all of your back ribs. Breathe into it, and as you exhale, just let go. Let it get longer. Let you have less holding on in that area. Keep on breathing and letting there be space. Couple more breaths. Come on up to standing. Turn to face the front of your mat. You can keep your hands bound. Left foot forward, standing single leg forward fold. Pick your 10 toes up, just so you're fully aware of your feet. And then just start driving your left sitting bone back and your chest forward. Sitting bone to the back of your mat, chest to the front of your mat. Bring weight into your front foot, Lindsay. A little bit more. Even if your back heel has to lift, that's okay. That's it, Ashley. Scarlet, weight in your front foot. Excellent setup back here. Nice, Lena. Perfect setups. Good. Twisting triangle. Right hand on the mat. Keep your breath flowing. Left arm to the side and then start to open. Keep both hips pulling behind you and then stretch your back right ribs. That's it. Keep stretching there, Abby. Keep breathing and getting long and then twist like a tug of war. Don't let me win. Chest across the room. That's it. Pull your chest across the room and twist. Then hands to the floor, downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, take a breath and have a sigh. Then come to the high plank and lower down to your belly on the mat for locust pose. In your locust pose, reach your arms out like airplane wings and press 10 toenails into the ground. Or you can set up your legs the way you're seeing Adam do it here with your toes turned under like they would be in a chaturanga and legs active. So you have those two choices. And then open up the chest. Whichever choice you did choose, we're looking for heels back, chest in the opposite direction. So your body's like a tug of war being pulled apart. Good, keep breathing. And keep breathing. <laughs> <laughs> you sorted that out real quick. Let your elbows soften. Two more breaths. Doesn't have to be very high. Come on down. Shake your hips from side to side. Let's do a second set. Actually, let's do floor bow. Bend your knees, reach back, and hold your ankles. Hold from the outside. If you could hold to your shin and really let your ankle flex, you'll find that you have a little bit more control over where you are in space. If all you can reach is your foot, then hold your foot. Shoulders back. Let your legs be strong and your arms be easy. Kick back and pull up. You can be taking this one side at a time. Elena, flex your ankles that way. And then hug until your knees are squeezing my ankles. These squeeze in and these press out. That's weird to do, but press in against my ankles with your inner knee and then press against your hands with your outer ankle. It's like hard to figure out, isn't it? Come on down. Wave your feet from side to side. Second set or second side. You could keep the same grip, or you could try on a different grip, which is the same as the standing bow. It would be palm face out. So set up the grip. Pick either one. The palm face out can be a little harder to reach. Whichever one you choose, though, knees only hip width distance. Breathe. So hug right here, Lauren. Hug the backs of my hands. Squeeze with your knees if you can. Yes, like that. While you're in the pose, take a breath in. Have a sigh and let your shoulders relax as the last bit of steam come on down. 
Upward facing dog, put your hands on the floor beside your bottom rib and just lift your chest. Pause right here with some softness in your elbows. Move your shoulders back and look over your left shoulder and take a breath. And then look over your right shoulder and open your chest more and take a breath. Look forward, keep your shoulders open. From there, move to downward dog with your open shoulders. Now move through your hands, sit down and roll onto your back. Get ready for bridge pose. Once you're on your back, bent knees, ankles under your knees, press your feet down into the ground and lift your hips up into the air. You'll want your ankles to be right underneath of your knees. That's a little closer to your hips with your heels than most set up. And then lift your hips up, yep, and tuck your shoulders under your back. Now for this one, if you could imagine that your inside knee is what's squeezing in against whatever resistance might be put there. Bring your right knee the whole way into your chest. As, once it's the whole way in, then toes up toward the ceiling. And then three times reach up and just try to touch the ceiling with your toes. Bring your knee into your chest and foot on the floor. And we'll do the other side. Left knee into your chest, toes up to the ceiling. See if you can press your foot into the floor that's on the ground. And then the other big toe up to the ceiling. Those two opposite spots. Three times. One, two, three. Knee into your chest. Foot on the floor and come on down. Once you're down, knee side to side. Let's do a second one. Bridge or wheel. Press down into the floor with your feet. Lift your hips up. Once you get your hips up, let's set the hands for wheel pose. So set your hands under your shoulders and wide so that your baby fingers are hanging off the side of your mat. Press down and rise up into wheel pose. Bridge is an option. Only take it, though, if you feel like you just, the wheel's not in it for you today. Press down and rise up. Take a breath. Get a sense of the pose for the day. Then tuck your chin and come on down. Once you're down, knees side to side. And set up the next one. We'll just flow through these. Get set up for bridge or wheel on your mark. Get set. Go all the way up, all the way up. Relax your shoulders if you can and tuck your chin and come on down. Once you're down, knees side to side. Next one, bridge or wheel. Press down and rise up. Scarlett, is that hurting your lower back? Stronger belly and don't press so high. Really stand in your big toe. Tuck your chin and come on down. Knees side to side. Let's do two more. Last two. Set it up. Hands, feet on the floor. Press down, rise all the way up. There you go. Big toes. Press them into the mat. Really the knuckle of your big toe. Press it down. Tuck your chin and come on down. Knees side to side. We have one more. Last one. Press down and up you go. Set your hands a little wider. They might feel a little better. Yep, that'll work. And then play with the rotation of your palms. If my hands turn out too much, it hurts a lot. I have to really square my hands. You might be opposite of me. Come on down. Supdabodhikonasana. Soles of your feet together, knees open. Then dead bug pose, you can hug your knees, hold the outer edges of your feet and pull your knees back to your shoulders and rock from side to side. Two legs straight up into the air, flex your feet so your feet look like they're standing on the ceiling. Two legs up in the air, then curl up and reach for your outside ankles. So just 10 times we'll pulse up. There's no need to unwind and then bring yourself back up. It's just blow out and let your abdominals sink deeper and your fingers reach higher. Go ahead, 10 times pulse up. 10, 9, 8, side body long, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hug your knees into your chest. Then your legs, one in the air, one straight in front of you. If you feel your lower back curling, you can bend your right knee or rest your heel on the ground, but no toes turning out, just square feet. Then curl up, maybe reach in front of you actually, the foot that's extended, and 10 times you'll pulse here. So breathe in 
exhale, reach and reach. Your work is to keep the two sides of your pelvis level as you pulse. Get all the way to 10 and hug your knees into your chest. Then switch sides. Now the left leg hovering, right leg in the air. If you feel your back arching, make a modification and curl up. Feet active, hug and pulse, hug, both of those. This one and that one, yes. And I'll feel it lock your hips into place. Keep doing it, keep going there. Feel it differently? Finish your last one and hug your knees into your chest. Rock back and forth, head to toe and up into boat pose, all the way up into your boat pose. Any expression of the boat that you find your body can be creating today, meaning that could be hugged, it could be knees hanging out, up, reaching, pick your boat pose, whatever it's gonna be. Then take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, pull your belly back and go to low boat. Then take a breath in, pull your belly back and come to high boat. Breath in, exhale low. Breath in, exhale high. You guys are doing a good job, exhale low. Go back and forth five more times. Pull your belly back to come up, pull your belly back to lower down. Last few. And then when you finish, hug your knees into your chest. Excellent modification with your heels down. As you lose your form, keep on customizing. Rock back and forth and through to downward facing dog. All the way through to downward dog. Once you get to the downward facing dog, we'll do right side pigeon pose. So bring your right knee forward. Square, just to try it out today, square your shin to the front of your mat. So square it up, thigh square to the side of your mat, hip behind your knee. You may be high up in the air with your hips and that's gonna be okay. Work with that and breathe. So check out your thigh. If your knee is out to the side of your hip, bring it in in front of your hip. So Lindsay, take your knee to your left more. See how it's outside of your hip? Yep, keep going there. So that you have a straight line from here to here. So bring this knee over that way. That's it. Now, if your shin will open more, do that. You got it. Can you feel that in your right hip and your back? So you have this option and the opportunity in this pose for your whole right lower back to open up. So healing for your knees to have that space open up. Take just one more breath here and then switch to the other side. Left leg forward. Left leg forward. So knee directly in front of your hip, left knee in front of the left hip. When you do all the little scooting around that we do when we get settled, look back and see if your thigh is still parallel to the side of your mat. That little bit of scooting around is your body just taking itself back to its habit space. So check in on it. Sit on to your left hip, swing your right leg around for double pigeon. So double pigeon sometimes looks like your two shins stacked up. Sometimes they're not quite stacked and you could put a block under your knee. This is an option and this is an option. But for all of the options, we're looking not for your body to be rounded, but to sit up tall and be hinging. So you might, all of you wanna put your hands on the floor and move your hips back a little further. You may try that on a couple of times while you're holding the pose. For everyone, actively flexing ankles. So if you take a look at your feet and they're sort of relaxed or curving inward, activate your ankles. Good. If there's space to fold forward, add the fold forward in. You may want to scoot your hips back a little bit more before you do the fold forward. Then switch to the other side. To the leg that's on top, put that one on the bottom.
some self-assisting you could do other than scooting your hips back is to put your palms on your thigh bones near your hips, so not out here near your knees, and press them down into the floor and roll them out. Yeah, a lot of down pressure. You can put the maximum pressure down, yeah, that you can do. How's that feel, Lizzie? Kind of good, doesn't it? It makes more space in your hips. Lauren's like, I don't know about this. <laughs> Okay, let's come out of that for single seated leg stretches. So stretch your right leg long, bend your left leg, turn and face your long leg and fold over it. You may find that this knee is bending or this knee is in the air and both of those things are fine. Hold the outer edge of your foot with your opposite hand and then maybe wrap the extra hand, your right hand behind your back. That's it. You might feel a lot of nice stretching in your left lower back, among other places. Switch legs. Right hand to your left baby toe and stretch. Get yourself into a maximum stretch space where you can feel some part of your body stretching. Then focus on that area and breathe. And when you breathe, yes, your lungs expand and relax, but really your whole body expands and relaxes even if it's just to the tiniest degree and in that happening space gets created two legs in front of you seated forward fold so toes they should point straight up in the air not relaxed and then hold the baby toe side maybe your knees bend and stretch your chest towards your toes so at first shoulders broad whole front body tall and just breathe, let your back stretch. You may wanna take a variation of just interlacing your hands to help your body stretch a little taller. And then in the end, tuck your chin and pull your belly back and get round. Just let your head hang. This is more of a rag doll shape. Then roll up to sitting. With a C shape in your hands, put your hands around your hips. So C shape in your hands. Then put your forearms on the floor. Keep your feet active. Press your hips away from you toward your heels, so away from your chest and your head and your shoulders. So you make the side of your body as long as you possibly can. Then stretch the whole front of your body, and then from there you can lift your chest and look back. When we set it up this way, there shouldn't be this quality of your back sinking to the floor and your shoulders to the ceiling. It should be a quality of the whole side of your body getting long, and then your chest expanding. Good work. Tuck your chin and roll down onto your flat back. You can roll your feet overhead into plow pose. If plow pose isn't the best choice for you today, you could be flat on your back with your legs overhead and waterfall or overhead to plow. If you're near a wall, Charlie and Miles, the whole back row or the against the pink wall, you could stand your flat feet on the wall. And then have a look at them. Feet at 12 o'clock. So as you look at your feet, Charlie, heels straight over your toes. Yes, it's different in your lower back, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, Laura, get your heels on the wall. Right there, press them in. No walls nearby at home. Let your just body be easy here. You could be in a shoulder stand. This is my favorite time of year to practice time of day to practice. Your body hits its peak temperature for the day around this time of day. And the summer keeps you a little warmer than obviously the winter does. Your body is ready to do more in the practice. Some of the things that you learn to just tolerate is the summer heat by practicing in a warm room. Your body just is efficient about that. Mm -hmm. 
So come into the finishing pose, onto your flat back, hug your knees into your chest. Drop your knees to the left and look to the right. A simple twist. And switch sides. Come to the center for Supta Baddha Konasana, so soles of the feet together. Knees out wide. In studio, somewhere nearby your head is a cold eye towel. You're welcome to place that over your eyes or I like to put it behind my neck. And then stretch your legs out long for Shavasana. Arms wide, palms face up. Once you get settled, take a deep breath in. And sigh. So here's a reading for you from Journey to the Heart by Melody Beatty. See how powerful you are. People who believe they're victims get to be right. Each experience they have convinces them of that. They don't open themselves to the lessons, the growth, and the beauty of each situation they encounter. All they can see is their victimization. Many of us have done the hard work to shift our belief system about being a victim. As we did that, we noticed that the scenery in our lives changed. When we believe something different, we get to see something different. People who believe they have powers to get to be right, too. People who believe they have powers get to be right, too. Although we know there is much in life we can't control, we also know we have the power to think, to feel, to choose, and to take responsibility for ourselves and our lives. We're discovering our creative powers and our power to love, including our power to love ourselves. We've embraced our power to grow, to change, to move forward. We know we have the power to claim our lives and take responsibility for ourselves in any situation life brings. Although life may deal us certain hard blows, we've learned to see beyond that. We see life's beauty, gifts, and lessons, and its mysterious and sometimes magical nature. On the road to freedom, we may have made a stopover. We believed we were victims and we got to be right. Now our journey has led us someplace else. We know we have powers, we know we have choices, and we no longer need to be right, just free. See how powerful you are. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale through your mouth. Another deep breath, and with this exhale, squeeze your fingers and your toes. And you can hug your knees into your chest. Roll to your side. And bring yourself up into a sitting position. Just sit comfortably, steady, then inhale and reach your arms overhead and bring your hands into prayer position. Now just sit still for a moment with your eyes closed and just listen inside of yourself. Feel what has shown up for you as a result of your practice. And then from here you could set an intention for the rest of your day. And three times we'll chant together. Take a deep breath in. Ah. Ah. 
Bring your thumb knuckles to the center of your forehead and breathe in. And exhale. Namaste. Good work. Thank you all for joining. It was a pleasure to have each of you here in class today. I look forward to seeing you again. I'll be here Friday morning and Saturday morning if you want to take class with me again. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, Jane. Good to see you today. Thanks for joining.